Hey everyone, if you listened to my podcast episode last week, you know that I went to Snow Base in Utah this past weekend and I did my 29029 Everesting event. I didn't finish and I'm super, super upset about it. And I know, I know what everyone says. I did a really, really good job for my first ultra endurance event. And yes, I did, but also I was so close to finishing. Um, I could have finished if only I did something a little bit different. We'll get into it. But what 29029 Everesting is, if you don't know what it is already, um, I climbed a small mountain. It was 2,300 feet elevation and I climbed it 13 consecutive times. I'd climb it up and take the gondola down and I'd do that, so I was supposed to do it 13 times to reach the height of Mount Everest. I completed 11 out of 13 hikes. Um, I feel like I learned a lot of things this past weekend about ultra endurance and about myself. And uh, if I were to do this event again, I do not think that I would fail it a second time. Honestly, I was so close to finishing. So the biggest mistake that I made was I, on my 11th hike, uh, yeah, on my 11th, no, what was it? My seventh hike on Friday night. It was my seventh hike on Friday night. It was probably 11.30 p.m., close to midnight. It was very dark. I'd been hiking for probably 15 hours at that point. Um, I hike the mountain. I get to aid station two, which is a third of the way up the mountain, and it's brutal. The volunteer is asking me like, hey, are you okay? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not. He's like, are you going to take a break? Are you going to keep going? Like, what's happening? Are you going to go to sleep soon? And I'm just like, I, I couldn't think. I was just like, I'm just going to go sit down for a little bit. And I went to go sit down at 8th Station 2. I probably stopped for a couple of minutes there. And then I was like, I need to get going. I need to keep going. So I did the second third of the hike. And I remember as I was hiking up, everybody was just passing me at this point. I was so slow. Um, I remember stopping, taking a breath and closing my eyes and feeling like I could fall over and just fall asleep standing right there. I was exhausted. And part of that exhaustion is yes, that I was hiking for 15 hours, but I think more importantly, I don't think that I was eating enough and hydrating and drinking enough electrolytes. I think that I was skipping meals and um, because all the while my stomach hurts as well. Um, I'm incredibly gassy and I feel like I had to uh, poop my pants a couple of times and that slowed me down as well. So my first six hikes took about 14 hours on Friday, which is an acceptable pace. I would have finished on time, but at that pace, I would have had to hike through the entire night. And um, so anyway, now I'm on my seventh hike and I'm climbing up to the third aid station and I make it there. So I'm two thirds of the way up the mountain and I stop again because I'm exhausted and it's dark and I, I'm tired. Um, and I sit at the back of the aid station by myself, just kind of sitting there chilling, um, sit next to the fire. And um, I'm just sitting there for a while, kind of in shock. Um, the security guard starts talking to me, trying to be friendly, like asking me if I need help. And I'm like, I don't know, like maybe if I just lay down for a minute, I'll feel better. So they took out this tarp for me, kind of opened it up and I laid down on the ground and I fell asleep there actually. I'm not sure how long I fell asleep for but I passed out on the ground. <laughs> I don't know how cold it was outside, but it was cold and I was only wearing shorts. Um, yeah, and I fell asleep for a little bit and I get up and I'm like, this sucks. And I knew that the last third of the hike, the beginning of the last third, although it was short, it was the steepest part of the hike and it was pitch dark outside at this point. I only had a headlamp and I was going so slow, nobody was hiking with me. I was just like, I really don't want to do this anymore. Um, and the security guard offered to get me a ride down the mountain. He's like, you know, 
you can get a ride down the mountain if you want. You don't have to go up. And I was like, doesn't that disqualify me? And he said, no, it doesn't. You just, the, the, this hike that you've done so far won't count. You'll just have to do it all over. And I thought about it and I'm like, yeah, I want the ride. Give me the ride down. I can't do this anymore. Um, which is my biggest mistake. I think that if I just reached out to other people that were on the hike and asked them to walk with me, because that stretch that was, that was seemingly impossible at the time probably would have only taken me 15 minutes to do. And then the rest was as still an incline, but a um, less steep incline and I could just slowly make my way up. But instead of going up the mountain, which might have taken me 45 minutes to an hour, I sat at aid station three, probably for a total of two hours. Um, like I, that nap I did, which I don't know how long it was. And then by the time I decided for a ride down, it took probably another half an hour to wait for the ride. And then the ride down itself was long. Like I, if I just went up the mountain, then I would have finished my seventh hike and I would have had, had enough time to do six on day two and then I would have gotten my red hat. Um, so that was my biggest lesson, I think. Um, I was hiking alone for most of the event, and I feel like if I just reached out to people, if I just made more friends, then I would have had more backup. If somebody just gave me a pep talk, if somebody was just like, hey, I'll walk with you if you want that little part. And because they have coaches at the event and that's what the coaches do, but I never asked for help. So I think that is my biggest takeaway from this whole thing is that like, I don't have to do it alone. I'm still doing the work myself. I'm still doing the hike myself. I just needed someone to be with me or at least to give me a talk and um, pump me up. And actually, after discussing the event, I realized that I didn't have coffee at all on Friday. And in that moment, I could have had coffee or I could have, I could have had food because I don't think I ate either. Like sitting there waiting to recuperate, I could have had coffee, food, energy drink, um, could have asked for help, um, you know, could have called a coach. I could have done so many things. And in that moment, I didn't think of any of them. I was so tired. I was just exhausted and I just wanted out. I wanted, I wanted it done. And yeah, I think um, a lot of things that could have gone wrong that week for me did. I was very sleep deprived going into the event. My period started the night before I flew to Utah. Something happened with my stomach and I had an upset stomach the entire weekend. Yeah, I probably spent at least two of the 36 hours in the washroom on my 29 or 29 hike, um, which is another reason why I didn't finish on time. Not that any of these are excuses, it's just what happened. And now that I have learned all of this, I don't think I will make the same mistakes again. Because talking to people um, after the event, like my tent mate was a ultra marathon runner, and she's done events like this before. And she said that during the meal time, she would avoid fiber and fat. Like she only ate carbs and a little bit of protein and she ate the tiniest amount. And I don't know that. I, <laughs> I, don't, I didn't know that. So I ate um, fiber, I ate vegetables, and apparently that can cause upset stomach. I was eating waffles at the aid station because I thought they were just carbs and sugar and then they put peanut butter on them and banana, but the waffles are actually very high fiber. And I think that could have contributed to my upset stomach a lot because I was eating them the entire hike. If I were to do it again, I would definitely prepare better. I would bring warmer clothes because they told me that the mountain got cold at night, but I did not really know what that meant. I brought a sweater and I, did not bring pants. So I only had my sweater that when I was sitting at aid station two and I was freezing and I was contemplating like giving up, I only had a sweater on and shorts and I should have had a jacket. I should have had pants. If I was warmer, I think I would have coped better. Um, but like I said, these are all lessons that I've learned from my first ultra endurance event. And I'm pretty sure that I won't make the same mistake again.
Would I do it again? I am definitely going to do it again because I did not finish and I really need to finish. I need to prove to myself that I need to do it. It was an expensive event for sure, um, but everything was completely thought out. I, the only thing that you need to bring to the event is your stuff, like yourself and your clothes um, and your poles, like your own personal gear. They, at the event, they were prepared with um, a recovery team, massage therapist, the Normatec boots, um, electrolytes, food, meals, fully catered, tents, towels, you know, extra linen for the bedding if you got cold. The, yeah, the only thing that you really needed to bring was yourself and your clothes. And there was even sunscreen and bug spray. Like I did not need to bring a lot of the stuff that I packed and I really appreciated that all of that was there with 29 or 29 and they even had a pharmacy of like Advil, Bengay or Icy and Hot, whatever it is. And um, it was fully stocked. And it was really my fault that I didn't ask for help because there were so many people available and so many people so willing to help. I would love to volunteer at one of these events sometime, but um, I don't live any, I don't live anywhere close to a mountain, so it's not, you know, financially feasible for me to go volunteer, but I think that'd be really cool because the volunteers were all amazing and they were, they really made a difference to have people cheering you on at the mountain. I remember when I crossed my very, fuck me, I might cry. <laughs> I remember when I crossed my very last lap at the end of the day, lap 11. I was really upset with myself for not finishing, but I didn't even look at her name. I was just so out of it. She, she like stopped me and she's like, I've been watching you all morning. Like, I know how hard Yeah, she said, uh, I've been watching you kick butt all morning. I know how hard you've been pushing, how hard you've been trying. You did a really good job today. And that just meant a lot. So thank you. And um, there were a lot of people that stopped me and said good job and congratulations when I got to the top. Because I got to the top near the end of the day. Um, so there were a lot of people up there already and waiting, and, but I was just so out of it. I didn't really hear too many people. I didn't really respond. I was just in a daze, <laughs> um, which I think anyone that was at the top of the mountain would know what I was talking about. I just was in a daze and I didn't know really know what was happening. So I just kind of crossed the finish line for my 11th lap and I went down and I branded the board number 11 and then I went to go shower and call it a night. I guess I didn't talk about the struggle that I had um, Saturday morning. Oh yeah, yeah, so Friday night I got the ride down. I, w I went to talk to the medics actually because I had nausea, I, um, upset stomach, diarrhea. Um, Pepto-Bismol wasn't doing anything. So I just talked to the medics and they were like, well, you just sound like you need to eat and sleep. And so that's what I did. Um, and I didn't even set an alarm because I thought I was just done. I was just done with it. Um, but I ended up waking up at 4.30, which kind of gave me enough space to attempt doing seven. And I really wrestled with it. And like Friday, I did six in 14 hours. How am I gonna do seven in 13 hours? I don't know how that was gonna happen, but I just kind of sat there. My friend Adam hyped me up um, and I just I just went for it. I started doing the laps pretty fast, way faster than I did on Friday the day before, um, but I still couldn't catch up and I couldn't make up for the lost time that I spent sitting around and waiting for the medics and sleeping and all of that, so. That's my 29 or 29 Everest, Everesting story. I, um, I really, really enjoyed the event. It was completely out of my comfort zone. I flew to a city I'd never been to meet a whole bunch of people that I've never met, 
to do something that I've never done. <laughs> um, never done anything like it at all. And although I didn't finish, and I'm very, very upset about it, I am really proud of what I did. And I can't wait to do it again. I can't wait to actually finish, and I can't wait to spend more time on the mountain and make more connections because there were so many amazing people there. And I'm, I'm really sad that I was sleep deprived and just not talkative. So next time I'm gonna do better. That's my story. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great night.